The new set for Flesh and Blood, Tales of Aria, is coming out in September 2021. And I wanted to give you a little discussion of, of what I think about it thus far. You know, it is August 2021, so we don't know too much about it. We know it was previously named Kingdoms, and now it's called Tales of Aria. Like, that's the official name. I guess Kingdoms was the, the name before that, like the pro product name, the code name, which is cool. And I wanted to just tell you what my, my thoughts are overall for, for all aspects of this product coming out. Now... To uh, properly dig this video, I want to tell you thus far where we've gone thus far, and then I want to talk about Tales, you know, the, the theme of this whole video here. So, at this current time, man, it's a, it's a very interesting time period in Flesh and Blood's history. We've been, you know, constantly berated, talked about, like, okay, Flesh and Blood is all about collectability, and people are just investors and all that stuff, but what's funny is it that it's slowly fading away, <laughs> and it's it's really great to see. Um, with uh, Monarch getting released, you know a lot of the prices tanked. You know three weeks to four months, uh, four weeks afterwards, because you know there's there's a lot more supply. Got people scared. You know prices of cards all across the board have gone down. People figured out that there's a lot of money in Arc Unlimited and uh, Welcome to Wrath Unlimited. So tons of boxes of those are being opened, and the card prices have gone down, down, down. It's great. It's a great time to be in Flesh and Blood. You know there's tons of cards that are available out there. You know, everyone was really hyped with Monarch, and, and the, the amount of level of effort that they put in the artwork is just absolutely great in Monarch. So getting into, you know, Tales of Aria, you know, that that's kind of like the, the where we're at now kind of feel. You know, people are gravitating more towards playing the game than collecting, which is a good thing. And, and I've said this from the beginning. I, I've said this, you know, at least six to eight months ago. You know, before in the future... Flesh and Blood and Legend Story Studios was focusing on making a product, making it collectible, and just establishing it as a playable game. Now they're going against market share. They're trying to grab as much people into the game in 2021. Remember what I said? Dennis system, you know, demonstrate value, engage physically. Well, 2021 is the year of engaging physically. You know, I've said this for a bit, and they're doing it. And you see that a lot with these new events. So, And what's really cool, man, is Tales of Aria. When they do their pre-release weekend and everything, there's going to be like a pre-pre-release weekend, which is Vegas in North America. And they're going to have the, what is it, uh, uh, not Road to Nationals, but the Calling event. They're going to have one, and it's going to be where people can play sealed and draft for Tales of Aria, which is awesome. It's cool how they put that into you know, their, their mix of, okay, when people first touch these cards, it's going to be in a major event. So that's really cool. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. I think I can go, I'm not sure at this time, like 100%, but I really want to go to the Calling in Vegas. Uh, looks really cool. But ultimately, Tales of Aria looks like they're really trying to maintain the level of artwork and just good things in their product so far. I mean, we've seen some of the artwork that's come out. You know, we've got the new hero, uh, Lexi. Uh, she looks pretty cool. I know there's a lot of ra Ranger weeboos out there who uh, really uh, just love Ranger class for some reason and uh, just just want to play anything Ranger. So I think that's good. I'm really hoping for a Guardian, man. I, I, I hope that comes to the scene. And uh, just talking about the whole naming convention, right? The Tales of Aria. Now, you know me, man. I look in depth. When I had a card called rally the rear guard it's the rear guard there's there's depth to that word you know there, there's the rear guard if you have to get to the rear guard <laughs> you're probably pretty effed like things are probably pretty bad if you have to use the rear guard in your fight same with tales of aria now now this is a little bit of speculation part of the video but when i hear of tales i think we're telling a story this is the past not the present or the future we're talking about the past these are tales stories so I think at this current time, you know, one of one of my big suspicions is that Welcome to Wrath, Arcane Rising, and Crucible War, and then Monarch are, are this part into the storyline, right? We're over here. But I think Tales of Ario goes way back. I think they're doing that little trick of storytelling Legend Story Studios. Like, they're giving us, like, the, the most spicy stuff at first. They're like, whoa, look at this. It's a huge-ass war. And, whoa, look at this. What's happening? You know, Solana gets devastated. And then what they do is the next set goes all the way back in the past. And then I think we're going to slowly build up sets until we get back to the future time period that is Welcome to Wrath through Monarch. You know, that that's my guess. And, and the main thing is just because I hear tales. And not only that, but if you look at the artwork, it looks epic. 
I mean, there, there's just these these big, big cities and big, big places that you can explore. And it just makes sense to me that it's that way. Because if you read Wilcom's Wrath, like the lore talks about people like coming to Wraith and they're settlers and they're, you know, just fitting in. They're, you know, just they're just getting their feet wet. And, and there's been a couple hundred years of history. Don't don't get me wrong. But it's not like people know what they're doing. They, they know that magic exists but they're not like really good at it you know they're just like oh here it is you know i'm gonna test it out do my best with it but i'm not like that good but when i see these epic landscapes when i see these epic type of cities with these you know crazy shit for uh tales of aria i think this is the past man i think this is the glory days i think this is the golden areas of the past of this is what these places looked like these are what the regions of wraith looked like before some like big catastrophic event that happened now it could be completely wrong maybe that this just continues the storyline but it's just a big theory that i have especially because it says tales tales of arias you know we're, we're talking about the past here in my mind well we'll definitely have to see and also if if you uh just read the the lore books i don't remember them talking about these great grand cities in, in aria i think it's just like hey you know here's aria here it is now Granted, maybe they just didn't get into the finer details because they were still hashing it out and they didn't want to go too far into depth in their, their Welcome to Wrath, you know, Beginner's Guide lore book. But I don't know. I, I think that's what we're doing here. You know, this is the past. This is the glory days. We're going to be talking about some like really like epic stuff that's happening there. Now, another thing I like is that they're going, it looks like they have the three factions. So hopefully we'll get some like lore or d deeper meaning behind the card art to see like, oh, like these factions are this way. And, you know, maybe they have different goals and their goals conflict region to region in Aria. And, you know, they they have little skirmishes and, you know, they, they can't get along and they disagree. And uh, it kind of remember, reminds me of the South Park episode where, Oh man, I I think it was like these this otter faction like far into the future. There's like these three different f otter factions, and basically the, all they're doing is fighting over like the name of what all they <laughs> they should be called. It was basically just a spoof off of like you know people are fighting for like stupid reasons, and I could definitely see that they have a similar similarity with Arya. You know, all three regions are doing like a different thing, or they have a different you know philosophical belief of of what's right and wrong. And, you know, they're, they're battling out for these, like, you know, small, small things at the end of it. But I, I'm really curious to see what it's going to be like. And I really hope that they add more lore to the, to the game. Now, I don't know if they're going to in Tales of Aria. I hope so, because it's called Tales. But I could definitely see Legend Story Studios focusing primarily on gameplay and competitive nature for the game. I mean, we recently heard that they're they're having like a million dollars worth of prizes in 2022. I think that's really cool. I think that it, they're they're really focused right now on gameplay. So I think that the lore in this game is highly underrated at this time. And I I think like people don't really know the inner meanings and like the the depth that goes behind these different cards. It's just it's just truly amazing. So I think that that's definitely something that's in the background and I, i'm glad i'm glad they're putting it on ice i'm glad that they're putting it off to the side at this time because they put enough hints into the game to make you as a reader to make you as, as somebody who takes in this uh consumption of of you know visuals and and data and say okay something good is here i just don't know the full picture yet and I think that that's great. I think it's fine to put it on the back burner as they're just trying to develop their game. But over time, in the next five years, you know, I think by year three, hopefully, we'll get a little bit more backstory. And I'm not talking about just the, I know people are going to say, well, Bronson, you know, Monarch, we know the hero backstories. Did you read them? Yes, that they were great. I loved them. However, it doesn't tell you like the whole arching thing of the whole world and, you know, what happened to Bolton and what happened to Prism. Did they fight against the evil people and what happened to Chain and Levia? Did they kill some good people? You know, <laughs> what happened here? What? Because you see these these massive devastating things in the background of the card art with Solana's getting just completely torn up, 
to, to pieces. And you see the Sigil Stalus in the distance of this this golden field, right? If you look at the original card art for Sigil Stalus, there's this golden lush field around Solana. And, and it's Sigil this is a big rock, and it looks pretty. And then you see the card art in Monarch, and it's just completely devastated. There's no there's no golden fields at all. It's just barren landscape. And you see the Sigil Stalus standing there just like an ordinary rock. So you know stuff went down, but you don't know exactly what. So hopefully in Tales of Aria, we're going to get a little bit more lore. And I'm not asking for a lot. I'm a simple man. I'm Bronson. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just a simple man here. I just Even if I just get the, the here's the Aria, here's the regions, and, and here's, a, here's a little book that explains what's happening. It, it doesn't have to be too many pages. Even just 30 pages is a, you know, an intro, okay, here it is, and, and, and here's all the aspects, and, and here's what they're squabbling over. That, that would be nice, and, you know, we'll, we'll have to see if it happens there. But if that doesn't happen, I, I think it's fine. Because, I mean, I just think that they should focus on playability of their game and the competitive nature for the game. Because that's, that's first and foremost, I mean, you're going to get a lot of people coming into the game for that. Um, PvP, or PV, PvE. <laughs> hopefully, P hopefully people are PvPing in this game. But PvE is something that's been talked about for a lot as well. And I, I talked about it, you know, a while back on my channel. And I really think it's a big thing. I think it's definitely something that's going to happen in Flesh and Blood. I mean, if you look at the cards, and if you've ever played Dungeons & Dragons, you know that what you need is like a character sheet, and you need weapons, and you need monsters. Well, Flesh and Blood like has like all that stuff except the monsters. You know, you've got your weapon, you've got your hero, you got your deck, which has your abilities. So all you literally need is the monsters, which are really easy to make. And you've just got like a completely new genre of game that's going to draw a ton of people into your game. So it's definitely going to happen. Is it going to happen with Tales of Aria? Personally, I don't, I don't think that they're going to make a specific product to the consumers that, that does that. And I mean, if you look at their product page, I mean, it says that they're focusing on draft, sealed, and you know, those types and kitchen table games, which I think is good, man. It's good. It's good that they're focusing on that. Now, does this mean that they're gonna not have anything? I, I, I don't think I think I think they are going to bring something into the fold at these calling events for North America especially. You know, I definitely think they're probably gonna have a booth and it's gonna say, you know, it's gonna be like the thing that they did in New Zealand back like a year ago where they had this beat the car event. And I don't know if you know that. Uh, I mean uh, the basically ba back uh you know, there's a event um I think it was New Zealand Nationals like a year ago. They had this uh, PVE event that anyone could sign up and play for the players. And they called it a prototype. So James White has, says it's a prototype. And and I, you know, if you dissect those words, prototype, that means you're thinking of implementing it in your game in the future. You're just trying it out now. So I can definitely see that. I can definitely see that they're trying to implement it. They're just being very, very careful on how they do it. And I, I think that that's really smart. Um, the beat the car event as a player, I don't know if that's like a really cool like type of PVE event. Basically, it's uh, a big thing, and it has like a uh, hundred health points, and you have to do a hundred health points in like three or four turns. Like that was the thing. I think it would be a lot better if you had something to where it does damage back to you, and it draws cards in some way, and it knows how to prioritize what you know cards to play in what order. Uh, I think that that would be really cool if, if it was some type of mechanic like that where it attacked you back and you have to block and all that stuff. Um, but I, I definitely think that they should hold off for now as, as a as an official product, as an official like putting it on the cards that you get out of your booster boxes. You know, it's definitely something you want to make sure all your eggs are good before you implement it. Because once you into implement it and put it on a card, you, you really got to kind of stick with what you're pu putting out there. And I think there's a lot of intricacies, but, but after all those, you know, negative comments of, of saying all this stuff and, and holding off and everything, I think it's a great idea. I think they should implement it eventually. I think in 2023, 2024, great time period to start ex experimenting, increasing your market share in those ways. But I really like with Tales of Aria, man, if you look like in North America, especially we're having four big calling events. 
It's huge. And then we're going to have our national events in Orlando, Florida. And I'm, I'm psyched. I can't wait, man. It's going to be great. And you can definitely see that, you know, for Tales of Aria especially, they're focusing on competitive play, drafting, sealed experience, which is which is great. Uh, you know, I'm loving it. I mean, I think I covered everything I wanted to with Tales of Aria. I just want to say that it's just great to be part of this game. I mean, just the level of product value that they're constantly putting out is amazing. And with Monarch, we definitely saw them really kick it up a bunch of notches. I mean, they just really took what they had as a product and said, okay, how can we make this better? How can we make this two times better? You know, what what level of artwork do we need? And they really ramped up the budget for the artwork. I mean, it was funny too, is <laughs> like during pre-release weekend, we saw these epic card art and we're like oh that's gotta be the legendary of the set that's the best card in the game that's gonna be so crazy and like these cards were comments you know it, it was nuts like and i think we're gonna see that with tales of aria too you know there's gonna be a lot of card art they're gonna have that one weekend where they show like you know 20 different card arts and gets people's like minds rolling uh, they're gonna start that slow drip soon, man. We're 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 already in August. You know this thing's coming up fast. You know September is fast approaching, and you know they're gonna they're gonna put that slow drip in our veins of flesh and blood content for tales, and we're like, oh yeah, you know, like every day. And I I can't wait for that. You know, I uh, just ranting at the end. I never understood spoiler season and pre-release season before flesh and blood. Like now it's just so nice. It's cool that like every day you're logging on at at 9 p.m. You're like, oh, when's a new card coming out? And you know. Uh, and speculating how it's going to change things it's, it's 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 a lot of fun you know and i'm looking forward to it with uh tails it, it's going to be a good time man but i think that we're going to see we're going to at least see the same production value in monarch where the artwork is just really nice i mean we I, the artwork that's already come out is is amazing uh the the three hero type bundle thing I think that's cool. I think it's cool that they're they're switching it up a little bit on us. You know, they they're not sticking to the just four in the sealed format. Now you have three. I mean, that sounds pretty cool to me. It's uh, it definitely makes it a little bit more uh, juicy when you're doing that. Uh, you know, drafting and all that kind of stuff. And I think in sealed, it's going to be nice too because if you only have three, then maybe it's a maybe you're more likely to get better cards for the class that you want versus four, you know, because when you're, you're opening your six packs for sealed, sometimes you don't get the cards you want for some classes and, and you really have to, you don't have too much building room at all, you know, because you don't have too much card pool of each, but, and let me, let me, and th these are made up numbers, but let's say in Monarch, right? E you get like 20 class cards for each one, each uh, hero. Well, maybe in, uh, you know, Tales of Aria, you get 30 for each one because now you don't have that extra one. Or maybe you have like 28. Essentially, I think, hopefully, you're going to have more class cards in Tales of Aria than you had in Monarch. So a lot less dead cards for Sealed, which which seems cool. Um, and if you're listening this far, you know, another one of my big things that I think that we're going to see in Flesh and Blood is duality. I've said this a lot. Duality is a thing. It exists. It, it's 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 out there for flesh and blood. You have to just focus on it. So when you see tales of Aria, that's Aria, and you know it, it's the the land of beauty and everything. I think that the opposite to Aria is the Savage Lands. So you know uh, another thing that I'm predicting is after Tales of Aria, we're going to talk about the Savage Lands. There's going to be a set that talks about the Savage Lands, and like that's going to be the focal theme of the next set. Because I think that they're doing this whole thing where they have different regions that kind of like counteract each other in, in the grand scheme of the map. So it'll be cool to see with that. So yeah, that's that's about it. You know, thanks for tuning in and watching uh, my uh, discussion on Tales. I'm just really happy to be in Flesh and Blood at this time period, man. I'm I'm really looking forward to it, especially man, because I run Bravo. I'm really looking forward to another Guardian hero i mean i just can't wait to play another guardian that'd be cool um it's just it's a really cool set and aria especially is beautiful man i mean if you look at the artwork in the past for aria it's just it's just mwah, like really good so we're looking forward to that well thanks for watching man have a good one